Hey guys, it's Austin here again, and I uh, just wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I just got in today. Uh, this is some of the Basecraft stuff from a new company in the UK uh, called Basecraft. Um, I've been talking with one of the guys over there, David Gardner, and he's been great uh, about getting me some of these products to try out here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of bases in a few subsequent videos here to test out some of these products and show you guys uh, some of the, the great stuff that they've got going on. Um, they're really sort of busting onto the scene here with lots of uh, small size um, containers of basing material, which is great for wargaming because, you know, unlike um, Woodland Scenics and other companies like that that are really catering towards the um, train layout sort of venue, uh, we're not doing a whole lot of stuff where we need just buckets and buckets of this stuff, uh, especially when we're just doing bases. I mean, terrain is a different matter, but for bases, we like to have some good, high-quality basing materials, but we don't need tons of it, so this is perfect. They're inexpensive, great quality, uh, really, really nice line of products. So, here's some of the stuff I got. Uh, this is some of the pigments that they do. This is the Light Rust. Uh, it's uh, quite a lot in there. Uh, it's at least as much as the uh, MIG containers have. And uh, looks really nice. It comes in uh, basically a P3 pot. It looks like it looks like the same stuff that P3 uses for their paints. Um, and uh, here's the old rust. It's a little darker and more red. Um, but yeah, they, they look like they are good consistency. And uh, I'm excited to get those out and try them. Uh, here's some of the water effect stuff. I think this is one of their newer products that they just introduced to their line. I really like the fact that it's in a small dropper bottle. It means I don't have to buy a giant $15, $20 bottle of this stuff that's just going to sit there and dry in the bottle um, because I only needed it for you know a handful of bases or even an entire army of you know some sort of aquatic-based minis. I'm not going to use probably more than this unless I'm really going crazy with it. Um, and even then, you know, pick up two of these and you're probably set. Um, so some of the other stuff that we got, uh, this is just a standard rock debris sort of thing. It ranges all the way up from these giant, uh, boulder sized pieces down to sand at the bottom here. So it's a really, uh, great mix of stuff. You know, you get one pot and you've got all kinds of variations in size. Um, we've also got some, uh, autumn lichen here. I love using lichen for, uh, for bushes and shrubs and things, um, and there's a lot of variety in the color here, so you don't have to worry about you know buying several different pots just to get some variation, so it doesn't look so monotone. Um, here's one thing that not enough people have: this is leaf scatter. I love the uh, the birch leaf scatter stuff, and it's really nicely dyed stuff. There's uh, a lot of variation, so it makes it look natural. You don't have to work too hard about uh, distributing different colors on your bases or on your terrain piece. Um, they've also got some really interesting stuff here. Let's uh, let's take a look at these uh, these green crystals. Um, yeah, these these look very cool, and I'm thinking uh, <laughs> just looking at these it makes me want to uh, to put together a Necron army just so that I can have some of these on the base. They, they just remind me so much of those. Or uh, Cricks for War Machine. I mean, that would be fantastic for, for basing those. They just, uh, they always look like they're glowing. They're not, but they, they do. They, they look like kryptonite. Um, so, uh, we've also got these dark bushes here. And uh, this, is, this is nice for uh, just some, some small clump foliage. Um, you can set it around your water features to make it look like some sort of strange little green tufts. But uh, yeah, I got those. And we got some static grass here. This is the meadow grass. And this is about the finest static grass I've ever seen. It's also very short, uh, which means you're not going to have a whole lot of the strange uh, grass patterns that happen when you're not actually using a static applicator. Um, so, yeah, I like that stuff. And we got this one over here, <laughs> and I'm really not quite sure what to do with this. This is called uh, Red Glitter Rock, 
and it's, it looks basically like um, like it's black rocks that have, I guess it's just red glitter on them, but what it reminds me of is some sort of black rock with a, a red mineral in it of some kind. Um, I think that they might be pretty cool to use in dwarven stuff, and maybe if um, um, you were doing some sort of cave or mine sort of piece of terrain, those would be really good. I'm trying to see if I can get these in the light here so that you can see them better. Yeah, you get the, the little red glints there. Um, yeah. Should, uh, should be interesting to try and find a, a good application for those, but they've got all kinds of really great stuff that really provokes the imagination and creativity for me, and I'm sure everybody else out there who's seen their products. I'd highly recommend going and taking a look at the, the product line on their site. Uh, it's really affordable. It's, it's cheap and they ship internationally. Uh, I'm in the U.S., so I, I got it here no problem. Uh, and l like I said, you can spend far less money getting their products and get a huge variety of different basing materials so that you don't have, uh, you know, just one big tub of, you know, green, flat grass that you use for all of your stuff. And you don't have to spend a fortune to get this kind of variety. So check them out, and I'm going to be doing some tutorials on the uh, the stuff that they sent me, just using it to make some, some cool bases. So check us out in the next video, and we'll see you then. Till then, happy wargaming.